Hello, everyone. Welcome to episode 40 of the Made of Things podcast. I am your host that is not just a host, but also someone who acts like a host, Antonio Maria Correa. So welcome. I am hosting. Please help yourself to some saltines and feel free to take your shoes off. So this is a very belated episode, but I really wanted to squeeze this one in before the end of the year. Uh, this time on the show, we have the lovely Melissa Livode and um, Busy Gongness of Telepathy. They played in Lisbon at Music Box last year, so I apologize to them mainly uh, for the huge delay. This is like... It happens to be because of this huge delay, really. Uh, the first uh, episode ever, I guess, from The Vaults. We have some stuff coming up that's really belated as well. Um, I will tell you now that uh, we did a video interview about a year ago, almost. Almost. Which will be uh, we, we will be publishing uh, and putting up on YouTube soon with uh, Ian Svenonius, who is uh, an amazing guy really and the sweetest and uh, we really love doing that um, but um, and that's a video one this one isn't this one I was just uh, with uh, Melissa and busy um, you know they're both Brooklyn based but r r rooted in uh, um, in, dif uh, in different countries uh, Melissa uh, really has uh, French roots and Busy uh, and has Norwegian roots but um, we did this while having a couple of snacks and um, you know basically uh, we ended up having a lovely and relaxed conversation really while you know while having beer and snacking during a wonderful winter afternoon in Lisbon so um, it's it's pretty lengthy it went on pretty long we felt like we didn't uh, it get it, it starts off slow because we we're ordering stuff and I decided to leave that one let that those couple of minutes in but um, it gets pretty lengthy uh, as far as um, as far as this show usually goes because people don't usually have much time but they they did and i guess they wanted to keep going forever really and uh i would have to but um you'll you'll see you'll hear me um calling them on um on uh, not calling them not but but being worried uh about the time constraints you know because they needed to have dinner and uh, were performing later that night so uh, at some point i'll be going um you know uh are you guys sure you want to continue because uh it's uh getting late uh and they hadn't had any food yet apart from a couple of olives or something that we had during this chat but um yeah so what we ended up doing was uh, was usual was lengthier than the usual uh, format of this show, um, and um, this will only be up on iTunes and uh, oh, I mean it's all going up on YouTube as well, but not as a video interview. Uh, but uh, yeah, so so it's just lengthier and more podcasty, I guess. So it's um, it's pleasurable, you know. It's it's nice to have you know be able to have long form conversations with people so yeah so please enjoy my conversation with uh, Melissa and busy of telepathy Uh, just brown beer. Oh, I like light beer. Uh, I, 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 I keep for. Um, 
It's not actually yeah, very heavy. Because it's not it's like ale water. or whatever. Okay. It's not like very... I actually enjoy really, really heavy beer. Uh, but uh, we don't kind of don't have it over here. It's yeah, more no, like... You a, have the best beer like, yeah, <laughs> Really? Yeah, I love it. I love it. No, no, it's not like that. It's one of my favorite beers ever. Next to Kirin, which is a Japanese beer, Super really? is my other favorite beer in the world. Okay. But only wow. unless it's both things have to be very cold and preferably from a tap, a draft. Okay. You know? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Because Absolutely. when Super Buck is like icy well. cold, it's yeah. like ice cream. Uh, okay, 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 okay. I uh, just slow down and intimidate you. No, it's. I'm working go. on my <laughs> Portuguese. That's not, that's really good actually. That's really I know good. a little bit more, but actually it's. Brazilian saying and it's really inappropriate and I don't think it translates. No one, no one gets offended. It's fine. Plus, plus this goes out like this, this is we're doing this in English and it's you know podcasting worldwide thing. So my so. friends tell me this thing like uh, they're girls and and like they tell me this thing that's like hi wait what come join us for the interview where are you going wait no I was just talking about my Brazilian friends. They tell me this term. I think it's it's Brazilian slang. Okay, go go go. Okay. <laughs> it's fine. It's fine. This all goes on. It's That's, like yeah. PD get I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't. What, what, what is it? What is it? I don't know. I think it translates to slutty bitch. But they're like, oh, I'm going out tonight. Like a PD get Oh, it's gonna gonna be. Uh, they say they slutty s- bitch. Yeah. 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 Like, uh, so that's a good thing. Like if you go out and you look like a PD get it's, uh, it's, it's Brazilian slang. You know, so it's Brazilian slang, so which is my Portuguese, because I'm friends with a lot of Brazilians. So I learned all this stuff, and I realized, wait a minute. Um, and and I also learned bicha, which is uh, sure, sure. gay, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's this yeah. Portuguese slang, so we like we call each other bicha, <laughs> bicha, bicha, <laughs> oi, bicha. But then I was like, oh, my uh, Portuguese is not going to go so far in Lisbon. No, it depends on you know. Sure, it should go. <laughs> it's fine. It seems like you know. Okay. It will work, right? You yeah. get it. I think I think you could. I think you could. Like, because okay. people don't, you know, whatever. People don't, don't necessarily get, you know, you, won't gonna, you aren't going to offend anyone around these parts, so it's, it's okay. Uh, yeah, I'd never want to offend anyone. It's always meant with love, I think. Even when my Brazilian friends speak, you know, we have this code and we call each other bicha, and, like, they're not sure, bichas. Like, maybe I'm the only gay out of, uh-huh. out of them. It's, like, with love, you know? Mm-hmm. Our, our our snacks just ca- just came to the table. What did you guys order? If you guys wanna olives with garlic and beer. Aceitonas. I'm sorry. Are they called? Oh yes, yes, yes. yes, yes. Aceitonas. Uh, Aceitonas. Aceitonas. Yeah, yeah. Olives. Oh. Green olives or li- uh, brownish olives or, or green olives with lots of garlic mm. and stuff. Mm. No, no. I just I ate a lot this afternoon. Thanks. Because I just I just got to hear from just ca- Chinese conference of economics and stuff like that and. Wait, it's trying? weird. No, Another no. Interviewing us? no, no. Wait, yes, <laughs> because it's weird. <laughs> we are so far removed from economics or the world of money and finances. I wish we weren't, but no, I, 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 really I am too. I just kind of make it my. I kind of make it not Some noticeable. Feature. I guess. <laughs> no, it was like like this conference in Kishkaj, which is kind of near Lisbon, and uh, just you know spent all like past two days just interviewing. Thank you. Yeah. Um, just interviewing uh, this is actually not very heavy if you want to I thought this was, was like Sapporo but no maybe I'll have a sip of no this is uh, this is Sagres and Superbok are pretty much the same beer more or less like but very different okay and, I'll uh, let you pour it and I will have a sip sure of course I don't want to mess no, up your pour no, no, it's, it's fine start. you love music I'm sorry what do you love music of course this, I'm, I'm doing this oh that's I mean, dark that is Super dark is but it's not very heavy if you want to Sagres this is the, the, the brown version of Sagres it's not that, that heavy is delicious isn't it I can't even imagine how wonderful this would taste on a top of course We're, the guys are trying black, black Sagres uh, they it's uh, actually didn't you guys didn't sign like I, I you're, you're just going to go the, okay so oh. it's like chocolate 
It's it's it is like coffee-ish. Yeah, isn't coffee-ish. It? No, it's like a better Guinness. It's like a lighter Guinness. Yes. Yeah. Uh, well, Guinness is like eating. I guess meal. eating a meal, isn't it? Like I guess it's kind of like you know the description every like people would agree on. I guess. I only drink two types of beer, which uh-huh. is uh, like a lager or uh-huh. a really light pilsner or Guinness, and there's no in between. There's no ales or IPA or. I don't like stuff like that. Yeah. yeah. I've uh, recently developed like my fl- my my taste for this sort of beer. Like I mean uh, heavier beer like that. Mm-hmm. Like even IPAs and everything like oh, from IPAs. then on. IPAs are kind of like uh, barley-ish or Yeah, I know like, and it's, uh, it's kind of weird. Yeah, it's kind of weird. It's not what I want from my beer. Experience. Exactly. Exactly. I don't mind having like a meal. Maybe Guinness is too much. Guinness is fine though. But I like heavy beer. I just discovered like I was in Belgium like uh, a year ago mm-hmm. and discovered that Belgian beer is something I really like and uh, like uh, I uh, I mean uh, the Pilsner or the darker the darker ones mm-hmm. I guess like the triple malt hey, ones man. yeah I know I can't hang it's so strong <laughs> it's very strong it's very strong but uh, I can tell like this is our usual thing and um, this is like a very the, the dark uh, one is is a, a variation of that Sagres I don't think they have Superbock over here really? I have Super Buck earlier, but I can't uh, I, I remember mean, where in this from. place. Or in this place, yeah. Yeah, because but this is really similar both, to really. Super Buck. What is that? Sagres, right? Sagres. Yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's the, the opposing brand. So it's like Super Buck or Sagres. It's the the. Uh... So wait, can we talk about some Portuguese words? Here? Of course, we can talk about whatever you guys want. I'm the. Uh, so I learned words like <laughs> saudade. Yeah, that's uh, longing. Yeah, longing. Yeah, it exists uh, here. Yeah, the, the thing with the saudade is that uh, it's supposed to be like the most Portuguese individual feeling more or less yeah. like the most uh, uh, I feel it sometimes yeah like yeah. It's, it's a special kind of longing which means like it's kind of long it's nostalgic right? yeah it's nostalgic for no, no reason like you know but maybe for a reason maybe for a reason I don't know but uh, it seems weird because I, I once talked to Peaches and she described to me that the Portuguese peaches. yeah Peaches like 10 years ago or something and she told me like a friend of ours oh really Wait, what did she tell you? What's her interpretation uh, of saudade? She, 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 it was kind of like saudade, but she was like more referring to Portuguese people as like pink goths. Because it's really good weather. We have basically no reason for like being essentially very inward people or very mopey people. And then we guess like we're very Wait, sad all the time. <laughs> but that, is mopey or you just like miss something? No, the longing is... This is a misinterpretation, I'm sorry. Because, because longing is supposed to be... Uh, you Look miss it. Sunset, you like, this yeah. skylight. like this, this picture right mm. now. This is almost like a painting. It's like a Disney it makes you a little like you're sad like, all the time. All yeah. the time you find yourself in Berlin. Sad that things are so And there's like leaves amazing. and rain and it's freezing cold. But then you like think about this image. And then you have you have that experience maybe? Yeah, I mean I thing I would say like it has totally to do with, with the, like this ineffable quality of pink clouds and I mean, look at this. I mean we're, this is late October right so I mean yeah but this is like how this is how every day should look yeah in beyond rock this is how every day should look like October in Lisbon <laughs> it's actually really really warm and beautiful. really beautiful sky beautiful yeah. sky and and it's not rainy at all this is I mean, weird because like the Renaissance happening Let's talk like let's talk about the weather. But like uh, the last time I did an interview over here at Music Box was early summer with Antoine, this rapper uh, from uh, the Bay Area, and um, she's really she's really really talented. That girl? Um, no, uh, no, she's, she's uh, the the no she, uh, the the Antoine is, is a guy, yeah, and the, the Antoine, Antoine yeah, 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 Antoine Williams, Antoine, I've heard of and um, I think he's a talking about a different Antoine. Oh, I was okay. Girl Antoine. No, no, no. I'm talking about the guy and the rapper. I'm talk, talking about the, the okay, guy okay. Antoine, exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I and uh, I was interviewing him over here at Music Box, and the, so the last one I did over here was like early summer, and it was really pouring, so I said, I'm not going to vouch for Portuguese weather anymore, because this is pretty much impossible, because it's late October, and I mean, this would be summer, sure, yeah. right? Because, uh, but um, just this is just informative, not, not getting, you know, this is just what it is, so it's pretty nice. But the thing about the longing thing is that... 
it seems like be like a quality of the Portuguese person to miss something they never had. If this makes any sense, yeah. Just like yeah, so it's your oh, imagination. It's, yeah, exactly. I suffer from that every day of my life. Really? How so? I mean, I can't even begin to explain it now, uh -huh. but like I have this feeling like I'm missing something, uh -huh. and I um, I can visualize it in my head, but I've actually never been there, nor have I experienced it. Uh -huh. But I'm like I miss it. Yeah. And it's not it's not in any sort of anxiety driven thing, it's right? Not it's not anxiety, just, it's, it's not, really exactly. passionate, it's exactly. really sad, it's really melancholy. It's not anxiety, it's just like it's a deep longing for something that I feel like I know but I've actually never experienced exactly. in exactly. the flesh. You know, Fadu Fadu is a, a style of music just dedicated to that completely. Wait what? Yeah, Fadu, Fadu music. Fadu. F F A D O oh F A D O. I wish we could just go upstairs and listen to some right now. Fadu. It's, uh, it's Fadu. Pretty, it's pretty Pretty is it old music or yeah, it's like or like traditional Fadu. Lisbon music, really. Is it like I'm gonna it's listen folk, to it tonight. Uh, yeah, it's. Uh, what does it mean? The, Fadu. If you look at that poster, you'll see that Fadistas, those are the Fadu singers. Mm -hmm. It means Fadu means destiny. So it's my Fadu is actually uh, fate, really. So it's a mu st style of music called fate, and uh, yeah, so like like. Uh, it means that you can never really do, you know, it's, it's, it's very, uh, I mean, we're all human and it means that they, like we're all fated to be human and not really achieve, you know, whatever, everything we want and stuff like, and we're going to be sad half the time, you know, it's very, very, actually very so grim. That's exactly <laughs> how I feel. Accepting and that's your human. Self. Yes, yes, yeah. but in like uh, Fadu is very is very very focused on the sadness and so and uh, well, that's so part of our reality, huh? It's like yeah. it's like accepting and celebrating your limitations at the same time. Uh -huh. It's not a celebration, but it's like acknowledging no, it's sort it. Sort of, like, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, maybe. I mean, you kind of have to at some point because yeah. the human species is a dying species. Uh -huh. We're on the verge of extinction anyway, and uh -huh. beyond that, culturally speaking, uh -huh. yeah, you kind of just have to make the best of or understand what's happening. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Right how, do you do, how, how, how do you do that, you guys? How do you try try to make you know make something of what's going on? Yeah. And, uh, Is that to reveal something to you? No, I don't think it reveals anything oh. to me. Like I'm pretty sure I have, I have my uh, my mind. Like I already see what's the future of our species. I mean, oh. not to say that, like, or the future of myself. Uh huh. Um, so I think it just helps me cope with things and accept it for what it is. Uh huh. Okay. And uh, does that? Do uh, you think that's why you got into making music and stuff? For sure. I, I was definitely. Say that. Oh, Make, making know. music helps deal with that mm -hmm. feeling. Do you um, feel like uh, getting up mm -hmm. every day and like leaving the house or going for a walk and then just sitting it and trying to make a melody. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And then and then it happens. Like you start something and then you finish it. Mm -hmm. And then you do the next thing. Mm -hmm. Like a song, you know, yeah. you start a song and you're like, oh now I have something to do. Yeah. To take me out of this weird sad feeling I have. Uh -huh. And you're like in it, you're invested in it for a few hours or a few days. Then it, the song is done and, and then you, you have to... Better? You feel better for like five seconds and then you have to start <laughs> over again. See, this is, where, this is why Busy and I like count and balance each other out so much. Yeah. Because like I can acknowledge that it's not going to feel better in the end. Oh. It's like what you do to kind of just survive while you're in the moment. So, but it's not necessarily that it feels better while you're doing it. It's just like you're like, I'm going to kill somebody or kill myself, uh -huh. or I can make this thing and buy some time <laughs> to get out of this mindset and accept that like fate and reality are this grim. <laughs> it's temporary, isn't it? So it's, it's temporary. It you're buying. Yeah. You're like. 
everything existence is temporary. Sure. This moment is temporary. Like everything is te nothing is like permanent. There's no permanence. There's no guarantees. So all you have to do is kind of just like escape or find a way to uh, acknowledge the very moment you're in in the best way. Uh huh. Like isn't that life? Like you're just kind of like. How do you make this the best moment uh -huh, uh -huh. right now? And You're not like thinking mm. about like, oh yeah, I was like, you know, with the love of my life in Paris <laughs> a week ago or whatever. Like I'm like right here and I'm like, this is special uh -huh. and this is it. And uh -huh. that's like... And uh, this, um, this even per perception is temporary, like even like you regard... Uh, yeah, it's temporary, but maybe it's, it's like even you, debatable that it's real. It's, it's like, it's not even, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, none like, of this might be real. I mean, uh, there is, like, actually a lab in the United States that's, like, testing whether we live in a three-dimensional space. Is that the singular? Mm. Fermi, Fermi Lab. It's called the Fermi Lab. It's based out of Ohio, and it uh -huh. legitimately. I guarantee. Oh, I've heard it's about real. that. Yeah, yeah. The it's Fermis. The, the Fermi. Fermi. Uh, Fermi Lab. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, they do start a lot of different research, don't they? Sounds like, like hogwash to me. <laughs> we don't. Oh, we, well, actually, like sure. the marriage between <laughs> quantum <laughs> physics real is and like, relativity like cells growing. Uh -huh. <laughs> well, even that, it does not have to be three-dimensional. Like, there is no to merit to marry. <laughs> Wait, no, we're just ahead. a band. We're just playing a pop show. But anyway, to marry. Um, no, no, no. It's fine. It's, seriously, uh, I don't. I, I quantum don't physics and See? general re relativity. The thing that makes the most sense is to understand that we only actually live in a two-dimensional space, and this three-dimensional space sure. is an illusion. Uh huh. Uh, mm. Which is really kind of narrowing it down to a much more uh, intense description. So, yeah. But if we were only dealing with two dimensions, sure, it would make a lot of sense between general general relativity uh -huh. and quantum physics. Sure. So now Fermi is actually testing and there's a lot of reasons to believe that we that this three dimensional space, this thing that is in you and I sitting here, is actually just an illusion and we are only on a two dimensional plane. Okay. It's, it's really, I, I I wasn't aware of that particular study. Like, but uh, it's even debatable that there's only. It's it's funny because it seems like you have to analyze the, the, the dimensions you had before before you can strive to like achieve uh, reach. That you only have two dimensions. <laughs> no, 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 no. So it's like just going back and studying them more, I guess, would uh, like enable you to understand dimensions better, and then you could possibly explore more dimensions. Because I mean, at least theoretically, it seems like there are more dimensions oh yeah I think yeah. there's like way more dimensions I mean it just gets crazy because when you accept that the human brain is limited to even as I'm sitting here with you at this table our minds only seem actually 50% what is here right now in this moment I, like, I, I've like already the brain has gone as far as hearing details yeah, of the hearing brain, 10% so sometimes you're probably right I, I heard 15% but somebody go. was probably lying somewhere in between is possibly like, the, like 10% Plus, who knows? It's perception. 10 we don't yeah, know. It's perception. We don't know. <laughs> we know that we have this device inside exactly. of our skull that fills in all the details of what we're looking at and having this experience. And nobody can prove <laughs> whether that's actually real or not. <laughs> and that's the truth, right? Yeah. No, but there's no proof that us sitting here in this three dimensional space is. <laughs> You know what you like, can care for, or care about. Uh, uh, I mean, proven. you know, I, I just. <laughs> you know, you know, you know what can be proven. I guess caring for things, enjoying things, like even if it's temporary, temporary, right? But like, you can vouch. Yeah, you can vouch for enjoying things, right? Well, that's what performance is. It's expressing enjoyment mm -hmm. for a few, min a few minutes or an hour. Uh -huh. or However long your set is. <laughs> sure, sure. But why we're not, we were, we're not, I, I actually, think that's hmm. the task of the performer is to try and express, or not try, but just express the thing that they feel. Uh -huh. Communicate. It's shared. Yeah, it's communication. It's like uh, it's this very immediate form of communication where you're just giving something uh -huh. and receiving, but. Okay, 
so like recently I was in this dance performance with a bunch of dancers mm -hmm. who are all have all have a lot of dance training and they're like overly thinking the idea of dance and 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 would it, and like why do I do this? Why do I get on a stage and perform? And um, the one woman who is the was the orga organized the project was talking. It was her concept for the piece, and she was talking about it. And she said, you know. We're just, for this piece, we should try and express the enjoyment of dance. And that's the main mm -hmm. principle behind it, no matter what the choreography is, you know. Because we were talking about facial expressions and how and how often, like, ballet dancers, because I have a lot of ballet training uh -huh. training uh -huh. from my childhood. and I know and, barely anything about dance, yeah. so this is kind of fascinating. Well, the and you spend all this time, like, perfecting technique in your body, and then essentially, like, I've seen so many dance performances where I watch this woman or the man execute movement in this amazing way and I like don't read any emotion from their face you know like there's no choreography in their face they're just completely deadpan and uh -huh. so we were talking about that phenomenon and how we wanted to not reflect mm. that just because we have a similar amount of training or something mm. like is that, is that like canonical technique in terms of dance like you're supposed not to have canonical. any uh, well I were just we were just talking about how it's not really taught or mm. or on the other hand like these competitive style oh. like pop dance scene mm -hmm. like dance competitions you have this like extreme facial choreography where you have to like mouth different letters at like A or E to like like put a smile on your face or a look of surprise and sure. it's like completely unnatural and you're not actually feeling those feelings in your body you're uh -huh. just you're just putting those expressions on your face and it's obvious to the <laughs> Um, audience that that's not real but like yet you're sp I don't know everybody's like pretending to be excited about uh -huh. the thing that's happening and is that like kind of like uh, similar to for instance breaking character while acting is it frowned upon in terms of classical terms I mean is you're supposed not supposed not to be breaking character or just like for instance in the comedy sketch you're laughing it seems to work though crowds get excited but you're not supposed to because you kind of steal the show kind of steal the lightning oh, like or something when you laugh at your own joke mm -hmm. or is something happening in the in what in the, the the bit you're doing like is it is it the same with dancing that you're yeah. stealing the attention the focus to your face when it's not supposed to i guess is it similar would you say or is this no reference yeah yeah i guess so it seems, it seems to Although be like i have like existed outside of those worlds and uh -huh. can, canonical dance or whatever or music or anything for so long that i don't really uh -huh. give a fuck <laughs> sure 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 yeah. absolutely but we, i mean in ter music terms i guess it would be the performance would be uh, okay so you have a band and then all of a sudden there's one member of the band who's like all uh, uh, acting like he's gg allen or or iggy pop or something like that and so it's so off tone that it's frowned upon but crowds get excited anyways I mean, I, hypothetically, of course, yeah. no one's gonna. Well, they, there, no one's gonna do that. <laughs> there are certain like tricks that work, I guess. That, mm. Or it's like, yeah, that's that's kind of a cliche now, but mm. it's still exciting to watch. Mm -hmm. And then you like, I don't know, you get into this dialogue with the audience. Well, you were talking about the facial expressions and stuff. Uh, yeah. Was it? Uh, did you guys just reach any conclusions? Like, did you guys end up doing it or? I guess we just decided not to worry about it too much. Okay. So. <laughs> we lost the question. No, we were just talking. We were talking about dancing and uh, and. Uh, just talking about like watching like certain like dancers with the, or typically like dancers with a lot of technical training don't off are not often concerned about their what they're expressing on their face and they often look like they're bored on stage or something. Something being like uh, not supposed to be happening or something uh, but people doing it anyways and it makes the like crowds excited thing. yes 
I, I know. People are watching it. That was my, like, at least my, uh, my angle. It's like but, watching uh, a bunch of robots on a stage, basically. Yeah. yeah. Essentially, yeah. it looks, it's like the people could not be human, you know, and like, and the audience has no Sounds emotional. Awesome. The audience has no emotional response to it. <laughs> <laughs> Who cares? Yeah, like, Who cares about it? Like a reinterpretation <laughs> visually of what that could look like on a stage, like just us speaking about this, like, okay, so you're basically reappropriating dance, ballet, for instance, but uh, it's going to be like with robots. Sure, sure. Let's Might look better than the real thing. Uh, I don't know enough about dance to actually, you know, that's hypothetical. But but I don't think you have to know anything about dance to understand how you feel when you watch a person oh, no, no. perfectly execute sure. this thing with their body and yet not communicate any emotion uh -huh. you know, uh, sure. to the audience. Which, like, you Screw don't them. feel Who cares? I mean, like, <laughs> oh, I, this is really weird. <laughs> I can't even I'm, tell you how many times I've just, like, been bored mm. to tears. You've been you know? this person. <laughs> or I've been that person, or I was trained I'm like, to be that person. Have, have you ever thought, like, while you were... This goes for dancing and music as well, like, what am I doing while you're doing it? Yeah. <laughs> All you the time? Like, you feel like a, like, bear in a cage or something, or like, I don't know. Oh, yeah, actually, I saw this video, my friend posted it on Facebook about how a, uh, a polar bear in, the, in a zoo in the Netherlands threw a rock at its uh, glass wall and it's underwater. It's underwater. Yeah, I saw the and video. it threw a rock at the glass oh, I saw that twice. One as well. Yeah, 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 because it's uh, shattered. shattered yeah, it shattered, shattered the glass. Yeah, yeah he didn't yeah, escape. Yeah, it uh, was just like <laughs> almost like, just on, barely just enough. Up the rock one more fucking time and throw it in the place so and he's like done, you know, <laughs> and like get out of there and like, like go fuck with that. fucking wildlife. Yeah, in a enclosed fucking whatever. I think bullshit. ultimately you're just supposed to be yourself, mm -hmm. whether you're a polar bear or. <laughs> <laughs> the goal Polar bear ethics. Of yeah. existence is not to be in captivity. Yeah. yeah. Sure. 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 Because yeah. nature. Because it's in their. Na it's in the nature of things to have some chaos, I guess, and even break free. Humans, right. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, That's what I'm saying. Us, us. We're like constantly like uh, this like environment. Environment or. Uh, domestic structures or ethical structures are imposed on us, but it's not in our nature to... I mean, I'm not making excuses for some fucking like, psychopath running around or anything, but I'm saying like, it's, oh, no. it's not in our nature to be enclosed and captured. Is it, isn't it in our nature to be repetitive, though? Do you think, like... Uh, a little bit, yeah. I mean, clearly, I can only judge that by history. Historically, it seems like we're repetitive. But, I mean, I do believe in, like, patterns to make sense of oh. our environment or so, our okay. world. So, patterns. It's important to embrace, like, uh, in order to not... Um, totally fall to some crazy darkness like you have to be with your community you have to be with like the, like you can't be an isolated polar bear in a <laughs> water tank trying to break a glass to get free like you want to be with your community you want to be with your like fucking people you want to be with like you know because like, if you are you're going to throw a rock at some point yeah yeah <laughs> you're gonna fucking bash someone's head in yeah And it, and it might not be uh, hitting a, a n unbreakable glass uh, window of sorts. I mean, that polar bear broke the glass. That polar bear was the, the man, the bear. No, yeah, yeah. just one more hit and it would have been like, psh, game over. Don't, don't fucking put a polar bear in captivity anymore. You know, it's like, yeah. let it be, let it like roam. Send it to Svalbard, Svalberg. Yeah. It's, it's which is an island oh. off the coast of Norway where the, the, the plenty of ice. There's covered in ice. Oh. There's tons of polar bears there. Polar bear sun There's a there's a town. There's a town. They do a lot of like scientific research and the uh, this seed bank is there. But um, anyway, the island is covered in polar bears and there are a few humans and you can't. The one town is enclosed. You can't leave the town because if you do, you'll 
die by a polar bear attack. Oh, wow. That's fascinating. Yeah. I had no idea. I've never heard crazy. I <laughs> never want to go there. Yeah. I don't ever want to vacation. I actually might want to go I this summer. want to vacation that island <laughs> in Norway. Oh, Norway. <laughs> in Norway, you gotta love it. It's got so much stuff. <laughs> Honestly, you know, I, I've never been to, to, to uh, Norway. I've never barely, I've never barely, never barely I've even gone there. there. Yeah. I don't like it. So you're from there? Oh, you're from Norway. I have an idea. From Norway. Oh, wow. Uh, so, I, I didn't know. So, because uh, I, I, I couldn't tell from the name, really. What's a... Uh, Gangnes. Gangnes. Oh, Gagnes. so Gangnes is... is uh, Gangnes is a Norwegian name. Oh. Although it looks a lot like the Ganges River. Exactly. Like, that's, yeah. what, you know, that's, I guess, you know, what 90% of it is. Chinese. <laughs> <laughs> the Ganges River is in India, not China. So. I'm just kidding. And it's <laughs> considered one of the holiest You're rivers in the yes. world. Right. Yes, yes. Or um, the holiest. It's not. It's Gangnes. It's not Gangnes. It's okay. Gangnes, which is a Norwegian name, very obscure name. And I was just on Gang Gangnes Street uh -huh. last week. I, we played in Oslo, and then I visited my family, and there's a street called Gangnes Street. Because there are a lot of Gangneses mm -hmm. in this one part of um, the countryside, about an hour east of. Oslo. Because I th honestly thought you guys were both French rooted, so I thought Gangnes was like Gagne. Yeah. Right. There you yeah. go. There you yeah, go. I'm the only French here. I do have some French blood, but it's on my mom's side. So, uh -huh. yeah. Well, there's some information for you on this show. So <laughs> at some point, <laughs> instead of just 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 chatty chatty, you know, just which is what I want really. But you know, uh, I'm just joking. Uh, by the way, <laughs> I'm just joking. I was saying like. I was wondering like how do we bring this about it? I forgot we were having an interview. <laughs> No, good. That's awesome. Awesome. No interviews. The, we are not having an interview. We're having a, a drink, actually. But uh, but um, we, uh, I was I was actually going to do something interesting, and then I broke the fourth wall, and now now I forgot. So what? I was yes. I yeah. I know. I was going to ask. Uh, okay. So this this podcast. This seems like you know. This podcast is called Made of Things, and uh, made, of made of Things, and uh, I guess like it's based on the assumption that, well, it's two things. Like first off, it's I like things, and so I get to talk to people who made them. That's one of them, and the other one. And it's really simple, actually. But uh, and the other one is that it's you know people kind of dedicate themselves to art. Uh, their life, their life to art, because it's intentionally or unintentionally. Well, it's it's interesting to find out actually, because I always thought always thought it was intentional, but sometimes kind of isn't. You know. Believe me. Uh, I mean. <laughs> I'm finding myself in an unintentional position. But it seems like at least you started doing this because you loved something. Yeah, because you know? I didn't have a choice. I loved it. Yeah. And that's in, maybe that's oh. intentional. It's a calling. Mm -hmm. I think mm -hmm. more than a choice. And not you know not every, everyone seems to even with that calling get to do this because sometimes it involves band politics and it involves and it involves human relations right so sometimes it sh shifts it's very uh, percepti <laughs> I guess yeah, percepti. it depends because it depends on chance a lot of uh, don't, don't you feel don't you feel like sometimes it's just yeah, it's totally it's to, just chance sometimes like because a lot of I talented even people believe we're sitting here talking to you right isn't it amazing? Yeah. To do, to do this. To, do, We're to express sitting here. yourself and do this and Just having travel. people like enjoy it. Yeah. You know, because. Uh, it definitely took a lot of effort and planning and sacrifice. There are people that take, do a lot of effort, have a lot of, like, put forth a lot of effort and planning and sacrifice a lot and never even get here. Yeah. So. And, I mean, and like, have I know those people and have talent and are original and they're yeah they have all those things and they don't even come close they don't even come close to this moment and are real idiots as well could be real idiots <laughs> no, true just, I, yeah maybe maybe they're so all idiots sometimes they'll have to be asking like it's, why it happens or why it no, what's, mo what's motivating you like since the beginning uh, beginning what motivated at the start like oh I need to do this you know do you have like did you have like a moment you wouldn't do that well for me I realized that um, I had nothing so I had nothing to lose <laughs> And the, it's true. That's you know? as grim as Fado. There you go. So the long well, yeah, it's a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
I can relate to that. But it's honestly true. Like, there was nothing holding me back. And there was nothing, like, you know, it was just kind of like as far as I could push it uh-huh. without, I, was, I didn't have any expectations because there, there was no guarantee of anything happening that it that I would be sitting here talking to you having this interview sure. or have an album out. I mean, it's not like we're some huge band, but uh-huh. we did get to travel all over the world mm-hmm. and be this band uh-huh. and release uh-huh. music. And then I talked to friends who were much more dedicated, like in this other way, sure. way more on this technical, like dedicated uh-huh. path and nothing happens uh-huh. for them. Uh-huh. Like they never fucking left the United States. They never sure. fucking left New York and all they want is to like make a song or like an album and like go tour and like do all this shit. Uh-huh. And I just have this kind of like blase I was just like as far as I can push it sure I will and it worked out that way and I don't know maybe it's luck but it's blase proactiveness then blase so it's it's, proactive. okay. it's you're, yeah, you're, it's you're blase. being blase but you're pushing it as well yeah it's, you have I to mean, try it right work. Yeah. it's not like I no you guys were impactful come on it. you guys have, have been mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. impactful yeah. twice at least now oh wow but, I mean we, we did that I think so at least sometimes I question that but yeah like this um, we're very different people I just <laughs> compelling desire to inspire people uh-huh. and be inspired yeah be in that realm sure You know, I, I mean, which is, which is what I hoped for. It's like you can go and you can play and like make money or this and that and like play a good show, but like in the end, it's like, did you like inspire people to like get, you know, move or uh-huh. to, or did you move them, you know? Yeah. But not in some obvious way where you're like, like I was talking about like the dance competition people sure. that like have these like extreme expression facial express like uh-huh. fake expressions uh-huh. on their faces but no, yeah m- yeah but moving moving yeah. people emotionally no totally I mean something happened to me a few years ago and you know I almost wish it hadn't happened because it kind of I like I like was a little a little you aware like, <laughs> I, I feel like my like intense drive to like push the music out into the world was I like settled it and I accepted something and this teenager came up to me in Venice Beach California and was like I like your music and she was dressed in this really extreme outfit like really like weird clothing and like not and hello oh. anyway but I just realized <laughs> like hey, wait, I I was like say hi I'm in the middle of an interview but Busy's talking right now oh wait say hi (laughs) wait you're in a microphone I'm putting headphones on wait it's my girlfriend (laughs) sure don't worry I'm totally present during it it's fine it's fine Busy was was telling sorry well anyway I just realized when I was her age I was I was that person too and like somehow like I couldn't believe it you know like I couldn't believe that like something I did like somehow affected this like teenager you know to even like come up to me and want to talk to me it's pretty cool you know that's that's the whole my whole thing that's like that, well, that's my whole thing it's not, I mean that's why I you know if I'm not doing music and I haven't been doing not to make this about myself but I mean I have some musical creation I just haven't gotten gotten a, a, around to it I guess because uh, it depends on a lot of factors but um But uh, my whole thing, like, if I'm not doing music, at least I'm talking to people whose music I really enjoy. And I haven't, and and I've 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 been doing this for like 10 years now, and I can't really tell you how gratifying it is to, or meaningful emotionally to engage with people whose art you um, deeply, deeply enjoy and and move, moves you so much. I mean, I can only wish for. Uh, anyone to enjoy things the way I do, you know, you know, because so that, that's exactly what you're saying. Like you, you, I mean, you were 15. You, you were profoundly moved by some stuff. W- which, which stuff, by the way? Uh, what, what kind of moved you? Uh, what stuff were you really into? I mean, 
could you, could you, if you could when remember I was 15, what I saying? I mean, I hope I don't do myself a disservice. Uh, yeah, sure, and, like, sure. Misrepresent my 15 year old self. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, you know, I was. She'll, she'll haunt was, you. She'll come I was, back. <laughs> I was really into. I was really into. Um, I used to go to a lot of punk shows in sure. LA. Um, I mean, musically though, I was moved by. The you cure. can go punk, by the way. It's fine. It's fine. Yeah, I mean, it's weird though because I like study classical piano. Like my grandmother was like a pianist, and you know. Mm. Is it though? So is it that of, weird? Eventually. Well, no, 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 no. But so I, I mean, I would go to these shows, and it's not like I was inspired that much by mm. what they were doing musically, but uh -huh. like the energy uh -huh. of it and having a community and like feeling kind oh, yeah. of like a little weird, you know. Mm. In my high school, I didn't have a lot of friends, and, mm -hmm. and that and that really made me feel like I could connect to other people through sure. like through not being like everybody else or mm -hmm. something and um, but I mean musically I was inspired by just really obvious stuff like the Beatles or uh -huh. David Bowie or sure. Fleetwood Mac you know and the, cure, to, though. and the Cure and Led Zeppelin uh -huh. and I would just listen to that and Wu-Tang Clan and I would listen to that sure. stuff over and over again like feeling like I discovered like the most amazing secret you know uh -huh. like uh -huh. like uh -huh. this is like my thing or like music or uh -huh. you know but it is uh, though so well those things you kind of have to at, at least at some point in your life like you have to get into to at least be exposed to them like my favorite band from since the beginning uh or at least the band that got me into music or how was it already predisposed uh was the beatles like my parents got me in a oh, yeah. beatles vinyl record when i was five yeah, or six and then i didn't listen to anything else but beatles records for three years oh, so no. i used so, to be, i used to babysit someone and for years all she listened to was the beatles and i was like good for you yeah, like that's exactly. what you should be listening to exactly. like exactly. when you're not all of it not all of it is stellar though but most of it is you know. oh yeah i can't i you know i can't deal with yeah. bungalow bill <laughs> i can't i can't i can't oh, bloody, oh, bloody. Oh, bloody. Oh, it's oh, just bloody, not good bloody. guys <laughs> but you know it's uh it's fine it's though fine. it's a good melody you know it's fine, like, if, it's yeah. fine if you consider everything else yeah. if it would ju be just that you know because yeah, it seems to be like give them a get out of jail free card <laughs> for that exactly so. exactly exactly it you seems know. like because like, some people seem to be like uh, the perception the perception again perception but the perception they have of the beatles is like oh yeah the beatles yellow submarine oh bloody oh blah, 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 bungalow bill well, it's really, really. You can't. You don't have to look very far to go way better than that. You know, like even, even if you just like the poppy Beatles from, from the from the beginning, like you had songs like in '65 or '64. Like, I want to hold your hand. I want to hold your hand. But yeah. I feel fine is an amazing B side, mm -hmm. and uh, um, Ticket to Ride is really good. That's you know more of halfway Beatles, but still, uh, you know, yeah. wow, it's a pop song. It's definitely a pop song. Oh, yeah. it's Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful it's, pop it's music. Gorgeous. Yeah. And uh, I saw you standing there. No, I'm sorry. And um, I forgot. Uh, hide your hide your world away, isn't that called? Hey. Uh, hide your love away. Hide your love away. Yeah. That's gorgeous. That's yeah. the help help you, yeah. and that's on, pop. As, yeah, that as, song as far as it goes. is amazing. And, uh, Sometimes and I think about the meaning of those lyrics. It's, it's I don't, crazy though. I don't really understand like what they, what their intention was, but mm -hmm. I, I think about that song a lot. Actually, the meaning of those lyrics, and it's like it sounds very like political to me. Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No, that's a, that's 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 a yeah. that's a, that's an idea. But uh, the you know they seem to have like. It's crazy it how, how young fair? they were, isn't it? Oh, okay. Still, I'm sorry, yeah. I'm sorry, is it not? Do you know what it's about? No. That's, no, no I don't know. I, need, I, don't I should find out. Yeah. I, uh, song lyrics sometimes, or most of song, I guess song lyrics most of the time to me are secondary. I just kind of, it's like the whole feel of the thing. And then they're essential, like, I mean, I, I'm way into stuff like pavement, for instance, where oh, song yeah, lyrics are just pavement. Yeah, pavement's impressive. amazing. Yeah. And whenever you have really, really good lyrics, but I like wordy stuff, you yeah. know, like anything that's 
I like I, I just like my uh, my lyrics to be very literate and very wordy, you know, word plays and stuff like that. Because that's that's my just my own particular taste. But, you know, uh, but you know, it doesn't have to be. Like it, it doesn't at all. You know, uh, but uh, but that's the um, I was gonna ask you before, like the perception of of uh, this. Uh, whenever you guys are tired, by the way, let, let me know because you guys need to rest before the show. Okay. okay. Well, we're, no, we're fine. We're just gonna eat dinner after this, okay. but we're just waiting on okay. the, song, the promoter. Okay. 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 Because okay. um, I was, uh, you guys just came. I'm just curious because you guys just came from where? Uh, uh, from on tour? We have been in Europe for a couple of weeks now, and our last, sh our most recent show is in London. Oh, okay. Okay. okay yeah. Cool. Cool. So, um, so I, I, I kind of need to ask you. This is more interviewee, uh, but how good you guys were? Uh, how, what uh, what motivated the hiatus for six years? Uh, you guys were away for six years or five years or um, something. It wasn't intentional. Mm -hmm. um, or were you guys ever really away? Because sometimes it's just again the perception. Sometimes oh they were away. No, we were working hard. You know, sometimes sometimes yeah, stuff like that happens. I mean yeah we were we were working hard. Um, we had written an album mm -hmm. as telepathy and uh -huh. you know she, Melissa and I both make stuff individually as well and like. Um, so we had plans to put it out and then something happened with the label and we changed labels and then we had new plans to release it and and then it got delayed and like we, we released a couple of singles thinking that the album was coming out like that same year and then oh yes but then like the, I don't know the plans changed and um, I mean I can't really like blame it on the label or anything uh -huh. but like yeah it was it was uh, I don't know uh, it, it just uh, it just didn't it just didn't happen and so finally I think like we were like relying on people to because our first album you know like we were kind of like relying on how it had gone on our sure. first album and um, so we decided to self release it and really push the release from our own uh -huh. selves Sometimes you can blame it on it, labels as well. So a bunch yeah, of turds. For sure, yeah. Just, <laughs> yeah, and you know, and now it's out. I, I'm, I'm just I'm kidding. Really they, they, it's an effort to put some some cool stuff out. Yeah, it's, but, it's a huge effort. Sometimes you know, getting the word out there is really tough. You know, but I'm being serious. <laughs> but, uh, it, I wasn't, is, it I wasn't is before. Really it yeah, is really tough. Yeah, it is really tough. And there were just like, there was a lot of time and energy expended on emailing with. Uh -huh and making plans and then the plans changing and I don't know. I mean, I look back on the, on that time and I'm like, oh, thank God it's over. And I, live, I feel like something, not only has the album has been released, mm -hmm. something for me has been released. Like I've been like letting this simmer in me for so long. Um, but, but I mean, otherwise, Melissa and I were working on stuff. I was making music in other contexts and for myself. And, uh -huh. um, Sometimes that happens. Like, so, oh, I to, I'm just, I'll just be off for three years or something, and then yeah. I'll come back or something. Well, Sometimes yeah, that happens. Was, Sometimes you're, you're you're really hard at work all the time. I guess. Yeah, it wasn't a deliberate choice, and we wanted mm. we wanted it to come out much sooner uh -huh. than it did. But now it's out, and we're happy that it's out. Yeah, how, how far does it go, like to? For exposure to, because this possibly happen. Uh, people, people, I guess people are going to mention this in every conversation you have from now on. Yeah. I guess, I guess, but like having a Trent Reznor remix is not very common. Uh, do you feel that it gives you really sort of a boost in exposure? I guess. Do you some, some, yeah, something? Yeah, I mean you that feel came out a couple of years ago, yeah. and I mean, yeah, we definitely noticed that more people were exposed to our music for sure. I mean, he's he's huge. He's, well, he's huge, and I mean, talk about influence. I mean, mm -hmm. I mean that was amazing. He influenced me when I was a teenager. I was very inspired by him and his music. That's insane. And, Yeah, and like, I can't even believe that he would take the time to make a remix or that he was, he was into it, you uh -huh. know? It's awesome. Did you guys get to meet? Uh, we, guys... No, we haven't met him. Uh -huh. Okay, okay. Still, you know, yeah. uh, does, uh, does it make 
any, make it any less important. I was just asking because sometimes you do, sometimes you don't. Yeah. Some, sometimes people collaborate and they're not even in the same place yeah. these days. Exactly. I'll just email. Oh, okay, sure. Yeah. Sometimes people meet for five minutes and do a photo op and then never meet again. Right. <laughs> this happens. Because I'm referring to something that you know Portuguese listeners will know because uh, Snoop Dogg does that. You know, like. Uh, oh, okay. Oh, someone hung out with Snoop Dogg and uh, yeah it's like uh, he, they just met for literally a minute for they're one, best buds and uh, for one photograph for yeah. one photograph and uh, and one video and they shook, shook hands and like did this fist bump or something and then uh, that's it uh, well you know just PR <laughs> that's where we are these yeah. days I guess <laughs> in the world yeah it's all about getting as many followers as possible oh right? shit hashtag Telepathy. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but, um, hey, Mel, uh, get back in here. Hi. Hi. Hello. Hi. 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 Uh, well, well, we, could, we can be pretty much done. It's almost an hour. Oh, okay. Yeah, Is there anything uh, else you want to We have no set time limit, so we can technically speak until tomorrow morning if you guys okay. want. Okay. Even during the show. Melissa, <laughs> one more question. That's, uh, uh, okay, sure. Um, I mean, you guys, um, how often does do you guys? How often do you guys uh, like what you do? And no, I'll ask. I'll ask a proper question. Okay, so is telepathy the best way, the best form of communication? And does that mean that you guys are kind of quiet sometimes? Does it apply to the band? This is, these are like four questions in a row. Is tele the concept of telepathy? I mean, is it practice? Does like it have any practical? Does it have any practical? Well, is uh, proven that it's real? I mean, we all know that it's something, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> it's definitely I something. Know. I mean, I, feel I can like vouch for something. <laughs> yeah. That, Melissa, do you want to answer the question? I mean, I am a very quiet person, uh -huh. and I always have been in it. And I've like forced myself to talk more. But I also studied English as a second language, so I think I was like extremely quiet and shy throughout my childhood. But then I like learned how to be more social, but not because I particularly like it doesn't come naturally to me. I was just a skill I think that I felt like I had to acquire. But yeah, I think music or dance or some more immediate expression is way more effective than than like talking. I just feel like so so, 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 so fewer misunderstandings happen. Uh -huh. You know? Sure, sure. Misunderstandings are so rampant in our verbal communication mm -hmm. world. Mm -hmm. yeah. it's, funny, it's funny you mentioned just learning English, because in my case, particularly, I think I started to learn English naturally by listening to the Beatles when I got the Beatles oh record. My God. Yeah, and uh, yeah. listen. I, I learned melody. There you go. From the Beatles. Then yeah. you have like uh, five per song or something. <laughs> yeah, it's usually. Insane. It's chord insane. progressions That's are how insane. I understand it. Their chord progressions are insane and totally simple at the same time. Exactly. Uh, it's, it's, uh, yeah, that's my understanding of the world. <laughs> <laughs> In Mr. general. Beatles chord progressions? Yeah. Yeah. Beatles melody. Come on. I know, I, maybe we should develop a new language of Beatles chord progressions where A to C to E flat minor mm -hmm. means it's not like a whole like uh -huh. book where, you know, like a whole essay's worth of an idea, just simply put. So because the the, the the those things put together mean something new and different. Yeah. Like or it just and everyone knows very, when they like, get the we get again. Yeah, the very deep like complicated yet simple uh -huh. emotion or plus it's kind of kind of already what they are. Yeah. As well. So <laughs> it would be something new and old at the same time. <laughs> so, uh, like uh, like refreshing yet familiar. So, yeah. Something like that. And, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I do have to embarrassingly admit, though, that I thought I, I thought I had telepathy when I was. Is this something you have? In like, like in a very literal way, when uh -huh. 
I was a teenager. Going back to a teenager, it was very. Uh, you mean the, you mean the skill though, like the ability or the. Skill. the uh, I thought I was like actively practicing it, but I think oh. it was like. I mean, I think it's a thing, but I uh -huh. think I was had gone a little off the deep end because sure. I was very reserved uh -huh. and quiet and. I think it was more like a defense mechanism or like giving myself this sense of specialness, telling myself like, well, I'm just, I understand things beyond the way they're supposed to be understood. Sure. You know, but I'm sure everybody feels that way. Right? I, I can, I can. I stand, I stand tall. I'll go with that as well. Like, if, it's kind of weird. It's, some, some, sometimes it has to be has to do with being an introvert, I guess, because you project yeah. you, you, project you project stuff yeah. like that. You have some sort of mental mental influence on on things, I guess. But then it's not. It's what not are you doing? Know. But then might be you don't know, <laughs> like right? You can't prove it or disprove it. Exactly, exactly. It has no direct consequence most of the time. That's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise. You'd be very successful in this, and and possibly dissect it, and then die. <laughs> yes, yes. Because you'd be very successful, and then be oh, this person person is weird. Let's kill it, you know. <laughs> and then yeah, <laughs> let's go. And you know. Well, yeah. It's almost, that's what would happen. That, that I guess, sounds I guess. like the. Uh, Not to be a downer or any no, rim. That's the, no, that, that's no, that's no, that's people get concept. analyzed. You know? That's the whole concept of the witch, right? Yeah, exactly. If she's a witch, and she drowns, then she wasn't a witch. Oh no, then she was a witch. <laughs> if she floats, then she's not a witch. But everybody drowns. No, if she floats, she's a witch. If she floats, she's a witch. But no one floated. So already your your yeah. fate. Is, yeah, yeah, you're yeah, just dead. Your, your fate is already your, sealed. Your death proves how <laughs> special you are. Oh, maybe maybe, right? maybe we were wrong. Are we going to do or not special? Or? Well, I don't know. That's pretty much that. No, that's pretty much it. We're, we're done. We're done. Yeah. Just like a really long little episode. Favorite Beatles song? Really long answer. What's your favorite Beatles song? What's your favorite Beatles song? It's hard to have favorites. Just name one. It's hard, but Blue Jay Way. Blue Jay Way is great. Great choice. It's my favorite. I'm. Uh, what about you? I'll, 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 I'm just buying to buy myself some time. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to think of something. I'll go with. Uh, I'll let Busy answer first. What's your favorite Rolling Stones song? Uh, mine would be. That's a hard one as well. I'm way more into the Beatles than Rolling Stones, though. But I'm trying to be a Rolling Stones chic. Me too! In a Beatles. Like, yeah. I'm in a Rolling Stones world, but I'm actually a Beatles fan. Exactly. Um, it's hard. It's hard. But uh, plus, you don't have to. But you really to, don't have to choose one. You on Rolling Stones fucking epic. I'm going to go. Missing you? Yeah, sure. Um, I ha I'll have to think way harder. With the Beatles, I'll go with the. Uh, I think that on the shit. Uh, I'll go with. I really, really like. I feel fine from the old days, but I'll. I really, I really. Excellent, song. excellent, excellent, catchy melody. Excellent, excellent. All around. I really, I've always been fascinated by I'm, I Am The Walrus because it's just so weird. It's just, and uh, I am picking more than one. This is, this is cheating. So good. And we am going to, and the whole White Album apart from... Oh my god, so good. But that's my favorite record. Right? Oh, there's so many though. There's so it's many. It's like, you can't leave out Revolver. Like, if you're like, oh yeah, the White Album, and then you're like, wait, Revolver. You can't, exactly. Tomorrow I never knows. Like just stay. one song, just yeah. like whole. It's a whole genre, and you, whenever you do something similar, it sounds exactly like it. You know, <laughs> like any any pastiche the Oasis have done or Timmy Paula have done sound like you know sound like Tomorrow Never Knows <laughs> whenever they are going for it. You know, whatever. This is my opinion. But yeah. uh, but uh, your favorite Beatles song? At least name one. No, it's fine. It's Maybe hard to I should pick. listen to everything and pick my favorite chord progression. Yes. And then I'll email you. And then, and then I'll understand. Because chord progression now. Because you hear some. Mine are like I'm so amazed by the most simple. Blackbird. 
What? You're just yeah, crazy. Fine. Maybe I'll just stay Norwegian. What? No. <laughs> just kidding. Guided by Voices. Do you ever listen to yeah. this band? Yeah. Um, favorite Guided by Voices guided song. Guided by Voices, Game of Cricks. Most simple chord progression, excellent chorus. It's like a Beatles song, and it's so fucking, like, it's everything. It's so simple. It's like four chords. Guided by Voices is really cool. I uh, Really cool. Really cool. I mean, it's just... Uh, I was hooked on the, the, the more, I was hooked on uh, one of their singles for a long time. Bulldog Skin was really fun. Yeah. Bulldog Skin? Yeah, it was really good. Well, Possibly. Uh, what's this? Yeah. Story? Absolutely. There's not, it's funny because like Robert Pollard was just yeah. you know That's I guess weird. it was such a weird. <laughs> yeah. That's so weird. You're like, where did that guy come from? He's not in the Beatles. Another person that's come out like uh, like every uh, with having like social media exposing so much because Robert Pollard guess I guess you know I don't know but well, like Wayne Coyne of, of Flaming Lips amazing. Is, is amazing yeah, but amazing. you can really I see how I think he had more theatrics. Hey, Prudence no. is really cool. Wait, really is that amazing. what it's called? Dear, dear Prudence. Yeah, dear Prudence. Yeah, not Hey, yeah, Dear Prudence. No, because I was thinking, uh, you're, you're, you're thinking of Hey name. Sadie, and I was thinking, no, I was thinking of, of Hey Sadie. Hey Judy. You were, Judy. you were, yeah. you, uh, and, uh, Dear Prudence. But isn't hey, Sa Sadie Hey Sadie as well? Sexy Sadie. Sexy Sadie. It's off the same record. So there you go. It's stuff we haven't listened to in 20 years, guys. So, uh, I mean. It's yeah. stuff that I never listened to. Exactly. But it's always in a catalog in the back of my brain. You always you know. You know? I'm like hearing it right now. I'm like, oh, let's just go up and listen to it. I think last, it's that good. The, you know, the last like, time. You yeah. You like think about it and you're like, I have to hear that right now. Exactly. exactly. Like Blue Jay Way. And you can go 10 years without listening to it. I think the last time I heard, I heard the, the, the hard stuff from a white album was 10 years ago and sometimes I'll go hey Prudence is really amazing that's an Dear Prudence oh there you go because yeah. <laughs> I was thinking uh, all the back of my head like uh, ti you know titles Susie and the Benchies did a cover of that song it's really good I haven't heard that it's awesome really it's awesome we like Susie too and even you know you have to it's very that a good go. even if not it's very good exactly it has like a really good synth line uh -huh. almost sounds like a Chinese dulcimer <laughs> Playing the synth line, the melody. Uh -huh. It's really good. What's what? Uh, but what, what's the instrument? Do you have any idea? What's uh, uh, I don't know. It's definitely a synthesizer. Oh, okay. Of some sort. But yeah, in her voice, in a drum machine. Some some synths sound like it works. kalimba. You know. Yeah, maybe like yeah. a kalimba. Almost like a kalimba. Sure, for that's sure. What, that's what I was thinking when you when you when you describe yeah. it like that. Like boom boom boom. It is like that. It's have, awesome. you ever, ever, have you ever held a kalimba? Yeah. It's, so it's, cool. Isn't it so cool? It's so cool. It's so, so fun cool. to play with the kalimba. Have you? Have, yeah. I, I love uh, melodic progression. I think it's great. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Melodic percussion is my thing. Basically, what piano is. Yeah. Melodic true. percussion. True. I mean, yeah, yeah, totally. I'm a sucker for melodic yeah. percussion. Oh, it's, it's really because not, not a lot of people use that, and sometimes it's just like, whoa, what is this? You I know? feel like that's a big part of telepathy, actually. Oh, no. how so? We're like melodic percussion. We're only melodic percussion. We're like percussion, oh, percussion, course. percussion, yeah. then melodic percussion. Uh huh. Uh huh. <laughs> yeah. Uh -huh. There's no rhythm guitarist. It's just all melodic percussion. So guys, keys and beats, but keys, not even beats. Like we tune kick drums to play out a melody on a drum machine. So melodic percussion. Is that the main, like, compositional focus for you guys? Like, is that the main, where you start? Thing. It's just how it ended up. It's like sure. how we hear things mm -hmm. and how we want them to sound. And I don't know. I mean, I think, I, I, like, rhythm has always been really important to both of us. Uh -huh. And... I think I, mean, it, I, I think it I think it well, you know, rhythm and yeah, and, and melody, but they're like it's duality, you know, it's like I feel like in the West melody gets the uh, I totally know what you're it's gonna say. The top. It's yeah. the most yeah. important. It's plateaued, really. Yeah, and then like rhythm is kind of at the bottom, but we put both mm -hmm. to the forefront uh -huh. streams. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know, and I feel like other cultures like prioritize rhythm. Yeah, absolutely. So, 
it's funny, it's funny how no, it's funny because because sometimes uh, you the perception you have of things again like uh, I've thought of things in the past in a way that some things to the front, some things to the back, and some things are really all up front, and some things are really understated and all in, all pretty much back. And uh, it's uh, I guess I have no point with this. My, I guess that's my point. But you know, it seems like you see things like that, don't you? Like oh, it's it's even though it's not there, right? Again, dimensions. We're back to the beginning, guys, and this is a segue. <laughs> <laughs> and it's a finisher. There we go. Yeah, right, it's, right, it's done. Yeah, it's it's done. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. This is this is this is presenter chops. By the way, yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's like yeah. you know. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. So yeah, I just love this conversation. I uh, after a long while, you know, I had the best of impressions uh, coming off the interview, but then uh, I kind of uh, this has been such it's been such a long time that I kind of forgot how cool it was talking to Melissa and Busy, uh, and I wish them well. And uh, and uh, yeah, I hope we can talk again soon. Uh, I'm sure it'll be sooner rather than later. I hope at least. Um, so yeah, I f just feel like we could have gone on forever, and um, and uh, I know I didn't want I didn't want this to end really, but uh, and I don't th think that they did it either from the f sound of it. But uh, yeah, just a couple of things I would like to clear up before we go is that uh, I forgot a lot of the songs that I was uh, mentioning, the Beatles songs I was mentioning, even though I was professing myself as a Beatles fan, which I definitely am, guys. I when I was from six to 10, so that's like four years, I listened to the, the, the whole uh, collection of Beatles records, day in, uh, day in, really, uh, day in, day in, every single day, so that, uh, and that's my, that was my sport, you know, I would listen to th those records while playing, really, and on myself, well, by myself, I mean, on my own, uh, in my own, from my own initiative, really, so, um, so yeah, I just, so I, you don't always remember everything exactly, so it's so it takes some time to, unless you've been listening to stuff in the past week or something, or in the past month, you don't remember even stuff that's you know, the exact names of stuff that uh, you know immediately, you know, like um, when you listen to them, so, and, and, and you, that you really know. So, um, sometimes you forget, like, precise, uh, precise descriptions. But yeah, that's, that's one thing. And the other thing is that, um, you know, I didn't mean to burn when I mentioned the photo op, I didn't mean to burn David Carrera, which was the photo op. He did a photo op at back at, back then with uh, Snoop Dogg. I've met David Carrera. He's a sweet kid. So um, uh, actually, really, really cool dude. A really sweet dude. So I wish him well as well. So um, yeah, uh, you know, just um, you know, I would like to thank you uh, for listening to this. I would like to wish you all a happy new year, and I hope you you're you've had a a, a nice uh, holiday season um, a nice that's so so watered down you know I hope it was awesome I've been I've been having a really you know hectic time now uh, recently but anyway I'll leave you guys uh, it's been a long show and uh, I'll leave you guys with um, you know, just uh, th with, a, with a thanks for for all the support and um, and uh, that we are going to have uh, more stuff coming up in 2016. Um, yeah, back in a year ago, <laughs> but 2017 and um, 2000, 2017. Okay, I can do this. I'm a professional after all. So um, so yeah. So YouTube, Instagram. Um, Facebook and Twitter that's mainly where you'll find us uh, the podcasts are always on iTunes so yeah um, have a happy new year guys <laughs> <laughs>